Uh, the good old woodpecker on the FPV flight simulator. Beat that Ringway Manchester. So welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to do some range tests on some new radios that I've been sent. So what we got here is the Retivis RA685. It's basically a neat little, um, nice screen, nice little uh, dual bander. Oh look, naughty, look we're on 446. You're allowed to listen on PMR 446, don't lose your shit anyone in the comments. So yeah, in the box you get another radio as well. Um, and instructions, you've got a desk charger which runs on a USB port, um, you've got belt clip, usual stuff, um, and and the lead for the charger. So you don't actually get an actual charger, like most things these days, you just get um, a USB lead. And then the radio itself um, has got a really nice lithium ion battery in the back actually. I actually stuck the battery on, but there it is. So it's a pretty, pretty hefty battery actually, it's 1800 milliamp hour, so 1.8 amp hour. I've been testing this radio quite a bit actually because they sent it to me about two weeks ago um, now. And yeah, that'll explain why the battery lasts really good because it is, it is quite a high capacity battery. It's cool. Now you do get an antenna, it wasn't in the shot of that box because I take, took it off to put it on another radio because it's that good. It really is a great antenna for UHF, not so much um, VHF. I mean, you know, you can't expect much from something that big on, on VHF. But yeah, impressed with the antenna. So let's nip out with a radio and uh, see what we can get. Should we take one of these? Can't show you this one, this one's top secret. I'm taking this one. We've got a review coming on this one soon. It's pretty cool, love the wheels. Why have they stuck a bloody fence around it? Yeah, I wanted to go somewhere fairly high because I'm going to try and access a repeater which isn't that near to here. Right, this will do. It's a bit windy up here though. Right, let's give them a shout on the repeater. M6JKA listening. Good mate, you're a bit, um, say that you're a bit windy there, G0LQP. Yeah, you can say that again, mate. It is absolutely blowing a gale up here. Okay, mate. Yeah, where are you then? Um, you, uh, you're on high ground somewhere. I wonder what you're using. Go ahead. Yeah, just through the other side of Old Harlow, Rog. Okay, mate. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, well, you're getting in the box all right. Your audio sounds all right. Just that wind there, mate. Go ahead. Yeah, Rog, a lot of wind noise. Hopefully, the uh, <laughs> the video will be all right. I didn't realise how quite how windy it is, but uh, that's good. Good about the audio, though. So it sounds sounds good then. Yeah, geez, you're right, I'll keep it. yeah no problem then, mate. Yeah, uh, I wonder what, what you want there. That, that rat of it, I wonder. Uh, wonder what kind of uh, setup you got there. You ain't got the pole up again. <laughs> Back to you. M6 JK returning. Um, yeah, no, it's just the just the Retivis, the RA685. Um, just sort of finalising some tests with it. Um, see how it's uh, see how it's going. But yeah, you're you're uh, you're a lovely signal over here. The box is a lovely signal over here. It's absolutely full quieting. Um, so yeah, that's good. I was just saying the antenna on this is pretty good. It's it's only small, but it works uh, works very well. Back to you from M6 JKA. M6 JKA G0 LQP. Okay, mate. Yeah, no problem there. Yeah, well, you, you're um, you're fully quieted into the box. Actually, it's like a really nice um, quality audio, and uh, yeah, no no problems at all. This there, mate, getting you. Yeah? Um, just that wind noise, you know. But uh, uh, I thought it might be a bit windy out there today. <laughs> But yeah, fully kind of quietly in, um, nice audio, no problems there mate, what's that, 5 watts? Yeah Rog, I'm going to test it later, see what it's uh, what it's actually doing, but yeah, I believe so, full power anyway. Um, Alright, thanks for the report mate. Uh, and I, I do agree, yeah, the, it would be nice to, um, to be able to kind of, you know, in, increase that top section of that scope, totally. Yeah, that weather is awful out there. Quite impressed with this, actually. Um, we did a couple of tests with some other radios, um, well, one other radio, which is a lot more expensive than this. I didn't want to include that in the video because it just, you know, it's a bit unfair because it's probably about, I don't know, 10 times the price of, of one of these. Um, and the audio is better on that one, a bit louder. Uh, this one is, you know, the audio is is kind of okay on the on the built-in mic. I think it's a little bit quiet. 
but you have got speaker mic connections on the side there so you could just add you know a, a fist mic and i think it would make a, a lot of difference but overall great little radio right i'm going to say something here you do need a license to do this um you need a ham radio license basically um it's quite easy to get hold of and don't be put off by the you know thought of you know oh i've got to take a test and do all that stuff because you can do it online now um, it's quite an easy way to kind of study for it. You can just, I mean, it's, it's not, you don't even really need to study, to be honest. I mean, I, if you've got a basic kind of understanding of of stuff, <laughs> you'd probably be able to get, get the hang of this pretty well. So how I did it, and this is going back quite a while now, they didn't have online tests at that point. So you had to take it in like a test center, which is the local ham radio club. Um, but now um, you, you don't need to do that. I think you can literally just do do this whole thing online. Um, so I'll leave some links in the description for all of that. So yeah, what I did was I got the book. At the time, it was called Foundation License Now. I think now it's called, just looking at the OSGB shop website, it's called the Foundation License Manual. Um, so get that, read it, understand it, absorb it all in, and then I don't think you'll go far wrong. Um, I mean, when I did that, I just literally just read the book and just memorized most of the stuff in there. And um, when it comes to taking the test, I just passed it with flying colors, didn't get a question wrong. And then, you know, you'd be able to use this little radio to its full potential, um, access the repeaters like I was doing, and, you know, talk directly to other amateurs in the area using the two meters and 70 Thames bands. Right, enough of that for a minute. I want to test the power output of this radio. Now, this is supposed to be a five watt radio, and it actually says on the box under five watts, um, or up to five watts. So what I'm going to do now is test how much power it actually puts out. So to do that, I'm going to use one of these meters this reads power output in watts. It also tells you your SWR. SWR is really important. If you don't know about it, go do some research on it if you're interested in kind of antennas, because it's really important your signal won't get out if you don't get your SWR right. So anyway, with this massively kind of elaborate bunch of connectors I've got on here, because stupidly they put N connectors or UHF connectors on this meter, which means I've got to like use loads of different adapters to make it actually fit anything. So anyway, I've got the right connector on here, I've got BNC, so I just need to connect that to there, and then we can run some tests. Right, so it's all connected. I've got a little antenna over there to provide the load for it. I've got a little ground plane on the bottom, uh, which should be suitable for like UHF, for this frequencies anyway. So if we just key up briefly on there, and we'll see, 6.16 watts. And the SWR is 1.06, which is really good, actually. So, Everything on here looks really good. I mean, that's impressive amount of power for a handheld. About six watts there. Um, this might not be 100% correct, but you know it's in that ballpark anyway. So that's performing pretty well. I'll switch over to low power now and just see what the power output is on, on low. So we just sort of hit menu, menu. talks to you. Um, you can go through all the different settings here, like TX power, and you press menu again, and then you can use the cursors to change it to low. And then that confirms it and then exit out. So let's try low power, key up briefly. And we're getting one watt on low power. So that's pretty good. So some of the more expensive radios go down to like milliwatts. So really, really low power. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're really close to the repeater, like say for example, that one we were using earlier, if you're where Steve was, he could run very, very, very low power and still get into that repeater. It's going to make no difference if he runs higher power. And that would mean his radio battery is going to last way longer than it would if you know, you're know you bashing out six watts on that, um, like, we, like we apparently are on high power on this one. But that's still good. That's a punchy amount of power for a little radio. But not as much of a punch as this one's got. This is for another video. Look at that, 20 watts. <laughs> I'm so asking for trouble, aren't I? Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Overall, really impressed with that little radio. And um, there's lots of different radios like that kind of on the market. If you want to get into, um, you know, amateur radio, ham radio, it's there's never been a better time because it's, you know, the equipment's cheaper. Obviously, there is a difference between the cheap and the expensive equipment. You know, I like to run my high quality radios. But anyway, that's another topic for another day. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Catch you in the next one.